Вот такую картинку и звук с айфона мы можем получить в моей мастерской с использованием стандартного света. А вот такую картинку мы можем получить с помощью вот этого вот профессионального оборудования. What's good guys, my name is Alek Nikitin, you're watching No Limits on channel and today we're having a rebuild of a studio of a pretty nice blogger, vlogger, his name is Alex, he's a madman, YouTube channel and he has more than a million subscribers on his two channels he has a russian channel and also an english channel i'll leave the links down below and we'll have a look what he had here before and what he'll be able to shoot after we uh, pump up his studio so guys since we're gonna be talking in russian i'll have some subtitles or i'll uh, just uh, re-record my voiceover so basically don't be scared of the russian language let's go so guys, let Alex tell you in a few words what he's doing, what he's shooting, because we have pretty different topics on our YouTube channels. Мы совсем вообще разные направленности блогеры, и с Олегом мы пересекались чисто исключительно в своих каких-то ютуберских темах, поэтому я вообще изначально смотрел все его видосы и понимал, что мне надо что-то поменять, но я вообще не понимаю, как это поменять. То есть по ремонту, если какие-то моменты я там для себя почерпнул, я сделал, но тут большая такая целая сфера, которую я не знаю, которую я из практики никак никогда не реализовывал, все было максимально просто, а как Олег хороший специалист, как я считаю, то что написал я ему, и с ним мы хорошо законтачили, поэтому я надеюсь, что мы тут сейчас что-нибудь тут красивое намутим. So in a few words, guys, Alex is doing the DIY content and construction content, but in a very cool way. So guys, now let's move on to the gear itself. We'll have a look around. Okay, Alex, so we have all the lights turned on, the local lights, the practicals, and why did you move here? Your subscribers saw that you've been working in a garage or something. Смотрите, парни, короче, какая ситуация, когда я постепенно готовился к съемке в новой мастерской, я понимал, что мне надо менять вообще структуру всей мастерской, потому что если я хочу вернуться к более-менее какой-то приличной картинке, надо менять как оборудование, так и свет. И поэтому и еще плюс надо поменять весь задник, потому что когда задник очень плохой, серый, там сами видели газосиликат. За вот этот вот промежуток времени я подготовил стены и подготовил более-менее какой-то свет. Олег, он уже будет настраивать картинку с учетом сложившейся обстановки, которая по-любому будет здесь. Вот. И, естественно, я не могу с учетом своих даже знаний предугадать то, что мне надо будет в будущем. Поэтому мне надо будет у Олега спросить побольше советов и на будущее, и посоставлять композиции, и, по крайней мере, хотя бы одну композицию составить, чтобы я мог ее запомнить и применять эти там какие-то схемы в комбинации на практике. Потому что по видосам, когда смотришь, это все хорошо, но практика это совсем другое. That's right, mate. So we got you a pretty nice kit of gear and it's relatively affordable, let me say. So all of this gear is not uh, like uh, thousands and thousands of dollars. For instance, my studio is five times more expensive, just uh, as a reference point, but uh, I'm a pro videographer, it's okay. That is why, guys, we're going to walk around and I'll explain as simple as I can which gear is made for which purpose to let you know, guys, the backstage of YouTubing and blogging and YouTube studios overall. So you'll see, guys, that he's not only doing it, uh, you know, with the iPhone and previously I saw your videos with uh, the backstages of your shooting and I saw that you had also pretty nice gear like sliders, motorized sliders and all that and you really have the idea behind your editing fast and uh, pretty dramatic let me say. And actually you did get the best results out of the gear you had before. But today we'll have a pretty nice rounded and not that expensive kit of gear with pretty good quality optics, lights and all that. I've done some reviews of this, and the links will be down below. Please explain us what you do in here and why do you need all of this gear? So my subscribers also understand what's going on here. Вообще, в чем вся заключается сущность этой мастерской? Если бы, допустим, мы говорили о создании чего-либо просто руками и не думали вообще ни о какой-либо видеосъемке, 
было бы все намного проще. Достаточно было просто повесить свет, направить его в какие-то места там и работать. Ну, этого обычно достаточно. Speaking about the lights, please show the lights in here. We have like, I don't know, 10, maybe 12 spotlights in here. Uh, 16, actually it's 16. And it's a lot. And they are pretty convenient because it's easy to use. But keep in mind that those spotlights are very harsh. The CRI can be not as good. You have pretty strong shadows under your eyes if you use only those and a pretty harsh light as well. It's not that cinematic, even though I hate this word, but we're trying to get as cinematic as possible with the gear we'll have here. I want your viewers to see not even how to make something, but also they'll enjoy the image quality. У меня получается очень много сложностей. К примеру, я там могу работать на распиловочном станке, и мне надо будет буквально сделать несколько кадров. Ну, то есть там отпилил, положил, там что-то там сделал и ушел. И вот вся основная проблема заключается в том, что у меня есть разное оборудование, к примеру, там распиловочный станок, есть там э, строгальный, фуговальный, там он сварка, там ЧПУ. И вот во всех этих э, зонах разный свет, вообще разный. И э, вот, 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 допустим, если вот взять сейчас камеру и вот направить сюда, вот мне надо, к примеру, сейчас поработать. Получается, если вы, наверное, посмотрите вот на вот эту сейчас зону, ну, несмотря на что она грязная, она ну, вообще ни о чем. Согласись, красивый кадр тут вообще сделать сложно. А проблема в том, что, допустим, я вот своим глазом сейчас, я понимаю, что что-то не то, а Олег понимает, что не то. И вот у нас таких зон по мастерской очень много. И э, не получается, э, вот допустим, мне, по крайней мере, почему и был э, сделан как бы вот этот небольшой апгрейд по свету, вот мне всегда казалось, что, вот, допустим, спотовые эти или там трековые светильники, ими можно там подсветить, засветить, и все будет хорошо, все будет нормально, но он же светит, но он же светом заливает, и как бы этого достаточно. Я возьму там получше камеру и получу себе лучше картинку. Но так по факту это не работает. Since we're talking about the lights, here we have not one, not two, but three lights. They are COB lights. So right now here we have a reflector on the Emron 200X, but you can also use any light modifier like the softbox, which is in here, or maybe a strip box or whatever. We have a ton of different ones and they will have different softness of the light and also different kind of light angle. So this one is more directional and the soft boxes are more spread out. This light will be harsh if we'll be using a reflector with a soft box it will be much softer and most of the time you'll need a softer light that will kind of wrap your skin and the gear you use it will be looking much better in my opinion and those spotlights will give you some kind of a backlight or accent light because they are pretty harsh and it's easy to use them as a backlight of course so you'll be using a mix of those systems because they have different color temperature we have here the emron 200 x lights which are bicolor so you can mix and match those uh, lights professionally with your regular lights so you have two 200 x emron lights and let's go here we have here our uh, cameraman michael is in here so here we have the emron 60d it's very compact, it packs into a small foam uh, case and also, as you can see, it's pretty bright and powerful. So you'll be using it as a backlight most of the time and you can use NPF batteries to power the song without using a, you know, a regular plug-in. Yeah, and it's a very nice little light, enjoy using it in my studio as well. So it's not a perfect solution for your studio because you'll have to move the lights around from time to time. But uh, maybe as a madman, <laughs> you can do some kind of a rail system on your ceiling because it's made out of concrete. Uh, so it's not as difficult to do, I think, for you. Disadvantage of those is that they have pretty short cords, but you'll have a lot of extension cords in here, I'm sure. So why are you trying to recreate your YouTube space and why do you need this gear? Because you had like a million of subscribers using just your iPhone and Sony A6300, pretty old camera. My 6300 died in these conditions, hard. 
It's pretty tough in here because we have a lot of dust in here. Yeah, it's construction work. By the way, guys, we're in the Republic of Belarus and we've we've made a pretty long way here. You can smash the like button if you want to support us. So you said that your Sony A6300 died. That is why we got you a new camera. This is the Sony ZV-E10. It's also a crop camera. And it's the best and the freshest from the APS-C cameras on Sony. We didn't know about FX30 in the moment, but I think it's the best bang for the buck for the APS-C camera. It records in 4K, it down samples from 6K, and it has a very crispy image in 4K. Also very nice autofocus, no overheating. You can run this camera indefinitely until you run out of memory on your memory card. And you can record like one and a half hours straight without uh, the record uh, limit. It's a flip out screen for your vlogging needs. In Sony A6300 it was pretty tough, uh, that, that is why you had some troubles with it, but now with the flip out screen it's much better. Also here is the Phil Ward monitor, which I've reviewed on my channel as well, so you can uh, use it for your studio work. It's not as bright for working outside, but for your studio environment it's more than enough. It's a 5-inch monitor. So it's much, much bigger than the built-in uh, screen on the Sony ZB-E10. And you can expose correctly, you can use LUTs, you can use um, different tools to expose in a good way, like full color and all that. So that is why I do recommend using this thing. Словить иногда сцену нужно вообще сложно, очень сложно. Я думаю, каждый из э, тех, кто снимал когда-либо, он понимает, что вот эти маленькие экранчики, они просто символически показывают какую-то информацию. Но мы здесь уже немножко поиграли с этим монитором. So now a few words about the lenses. The first lens is a Viltrex 56mm f1.4. It's a fixed lens. It doesn't zoom in. You would say uh, it sucks. It doesn't zoom in. No. Um, fixed lenses, they provide you, or prime lenses, they provide you with the best image. And this lens is more of a portrait lens. So for your talking headshots or for some detailed shots, uh, you'll have a pretty good background separation with it. And uh, the f1.4 aperture is really giving you the opportunity to shoot in low light. Uh, easily. So sometimes you will be able not to bring lights to a different part of your uh, workshop and just, you know, crank up the shutter and aperture and uh, ISO and have a couple of shots done. And the second lens is Sigma 16mm f1.4. It's a pretty wide angle lens, 24mm full frame equivalent. So you'll be able to reach out your camera with your hand. And uh, it's not obligatory, of course, to use this lens for your talking headshots, but it's very convenient as well. На самом деле, вот эти два объектива покроют, наверное, 90% твоих задач. Я думаю, тебе на первое время их твоих хватит. Потом можно посмотреть что-нибудь посерединке, например, 33 мм на кропе. And also I would like to mention that Sony ZV-E10 does pretty good stills with RAW. You can take it with you to your vacations and have pretty nice pictures. And it costs not a ton of money, to be honest. It's really good bang for the buck. And nothing comes close to it for this amount of money. So do you know what it is? Примерно по твоим обзорам и обзорам других блогеров, примерно да. Но в владении этого не было никогда. So guys, this is a softbox. It's a modifier for your COB lights and it gives you a very soft light. And the main idea of this one is that it has quick release system and you can easily kind of put it down and set it up in a few seconds. So you just unlock those small levers and it just works. It has a case. You, you come to a different location, you simply set it up in a few seconds and it's ready to go. It's a very, very nice thing and very convenient, so you can basically have a studio somewhere outside, like a mini studio in a different place. It's 85 millimeters in diameter and it's more than enough for the studio environment to get soft light. If it was smaller, the light would be harsher. So the bigger the softbox, the softer the light, of course. And uh, let's have a look at a different thing that you've made <laughs> yourself. So speaking about uh, bigger, like square feet of, of this thing, it's a reflector with a white foam board. And on the back side, it's black. It's called a flag. My first 
швы пушка. This thing is also called a foam board. It allows you to add up a little bit of light from the other side from your key light, so you have some fill light. It's called a fill light. And what I really enjoyed with the Alex's um, DIY studio, done the base for this and uh, had this two parts of foam board and that's it. Maybe it's around $20. So for $20 you'll be able to do this in your father's uh, garage or workshop, take some instruments and save some money. And you can have a look at Alex's channel, how it's done, because he, uh, he has a ton of different cool videos about DIY. So here we have the Aperture B7C lights. I also have a big uh, review of this uh, on my channel. And Alex is going to make a couple of things with those. Я думаю, вот после советов Олега, я попытаюсь сделать какие-нибудь DIY на светильники, потому что вот мне они зашли лампочки, очень классно. The thing about those RGB bulbs is that they are totally RGB and they have built-in effects and they can be uh, kind of daisy chained into one system and you can work with those through uh, Cytos Link app. It's very easy to use and it's very convenient as well. So you can make even some presets for your studio. So you come to a studio, you set, um, you just hit one button and you have your different lights set to a proper Kelvin, to a proper color temperature, to proper brightness and you'll be ready to rock and roll just in a few seconds. And you can use those aperture bulbs just to be used in a regular lamp and have any color, whatever you want to, as you can see right here. And it's also very nice and convenient. I put compositions in different areas of the workshop, on different equipment. Running with lights, with all kinds of lights, it's a very problem, it's a very problem. If it was just a light bulb, like an Aliexpress, it's not enough. И э, это было бы намного сложнее. Я бы, скорее всего, со временем, наверное, вряд ли бы их использовал. I have to mention that the battery life of those is not as huge as you might have noticed. It's like 40 minutes probably, but it simply charges in a lamp. Are you for Jedi or a Sith? I didn't watch uh, Star Wars for several years. Here we have another uh, aperture light or Amaran light. It's a light wand or lightsaber. I'm looking like Mace Window <laughs> a little bit right here. So here we have a full control of HSI, RGB, and uh, we can make any kind of light. It also connects to Cytos Link app with the same uh, aperture lights like 200X and uh, B7C light bulbs. I use this almost all the time as an accent light with uh, color mode, but you can also use it with a daylight mode and use it as a portable light wand with pretty nice battery life as well. Even though it's pretty compact, but it allows you to get some soft light because as you can see, we have a pretty big lighting surface with this light. And now it's fully charged and we can see that it will run for more than two hours on full power. So you'll do some kind of shots you know, like here and there for five, 10 minutes and it will last you for the full day. You know, maybe you come drink coffee and after that you came back and it's charged already and you can use it for another day for sure. So you don't have to bring your uh, like usual more powerful lights with cords. You can use those battery lights for a lot of shots. Alex, which tripod do you use? Штатив моей супруги, так сказать, в последнее время использовал я его, потому что два своих штатива я убил. Они у меня как-то быстро убиваются. Во-первых, они всегда были бюджетные, потому что там а, особо... Во-вторых, пыльные. Да, во-вторых, пыльные. И поэтому, вот даже глядя вот на эту штуку, которая приехала... Она прям, сексуальная прям. Радует да? меня вообще. Да, давайте посмотрим, в чем плюс и минус. So guys, what's the differences between good tripods and uh, you'd better invest in a good tripod once than invest in two pretty cheap tripods like every year or half a year. So this one, for instance, it has a benefit that it's compact and kind of lightweight, but I don't like this screw on off uh, mechanism because as you can see, it can fall off and we can only pan with this uh, head and we cannot tilt with this head of course and you cannot do it as smooth as you can with the proper video head you can use it as a ball head of course you can do some top down shots for instance but this one i mean this pro uh, tripod is better because you can use it with your proper camera with monitor on we have a video head fluid head on here so we can have smooth tilt we can have smooth pan we have different lockers, so it's easier to use. 
And one more life hack, you can use your just simple rubber bands and pull the rubber band to make it smoother. So you just pull the rubber band and that is why you get super smooth shots. Small life hack for you. And also we have a bowl, uh, level bowl head here as well, so you can level it up easily. So the bubble level is kind of thing that your viewers know <laughs> for sure. And you can level up your camera and do not adjust every single stick. And it's also pretty fast to collapse, as you can see. So one movement and it's collapsed. The other one and it's collapsed. Yeah, by the way, the tripod is from e-image company and they have a lot of good tripods. They also have a huge one and very heavy and heavy duty one for 12 kilograms of weight. Yeah, and uh, I have reviewed this monster on my channel as well because it had Sony FS7 before, as you can see from those B-roll shots. But by the way, this one is pretty lightweight as well. What kind of light stand is it? Стойка. Когда-то я делал обзор там же на лайв канале там на свое оборудование. Ну, естественно, опять же по финансам ты обы выискиваешь себе, что там что-нибудь стояло бы и что-нибудь там держало бы. И тем более, когда на Алиэкспрессе там заходишь и выбираешь какие-то товары, ты не понимаешь, зачем переплачивать там, допустим, за стойку дороже, больше, а за какую-то меньше. Если вот есть, например, за 20 долларов, там за 10 долларов, ты купил такой достаточно. Вот. А оказывается вот. So Alex, we also got you pretty good light stands as well. It's more thick as you can see, it has bigger spread underneath and it's 260 centimeters on maximum height and I suggest you use some kind of sandbags to add weight to the lower part of the light stand. So we have three of those, four, four of those. And also guys, I think you've mentioned that we have this little case, do you know what's inside? <laughs> Considering that you and Michael shot some B-roll before, before it came. So here we have a set of ND filters. ND filter is kind of sunglasses for your camera. So if you have too much light, like outside during a sunny day, sometimes you do shoot outside, I think. And by the way, you can shoot some welding process with, with the ND filter. I think you do this a lot. <laughs> so here we have a 67 millimeter filter thread on the Sigma 16 millimeter. Now you simply screw on an ND filter, but it has a magnetic system. So we have a base plate and also a magnetic filter itself. If you don't need this one, you just simply un unmagnet this one and they have a variable ND. You can pick whatever ND level you want with this one. So ND filter just darkens your picture, but cheap ones, they do different uh, tints and they have like X pattern and it really messes up your image quality. So don't use cheap NDs for sure. So here it is, we got you this very nice ND kit. We have several NDs, we have step up rings as far as I understand. We have more dark ND and less dark ND. And basically guys, why we need an ND filter to shoot outside? We do this because we need a proper motion blur with one over 50th of a second when we shoot 25 frames per second and one over 100th when we shoot 50 frames a second. But if we crank up the shutter like one over 1000th, your shutter speed would look very jittery. For instance, uh, some fight scenes in the movies, we see that they shot with shorter shutter speed and they look differently, uh, too sharp, let me say. So to achieve this outside, you either just uh, step down and you have a ton of dust in here and you see some you know dust particles all over the place at f11 aperture or something, or you just use an ND and set good and right aperture that you want low ISO and of course correct shutter speed. Do you know what it is? What's the magic box? <laughs> the best helper of any blogger for integrations. So it's a teleprompter. It comes 
in front of the lens and you put down your smartphone and start reading the text looking inside of a camera it's really easy to use if you don't want to memorize a fragment of a text or it has to be a certain text without any uh, creative uh, things and words from you but for several jobs it's very very usable i use it for my client shoes because they come uh, like say um, we have 20 pages of uh, word documents so please insert it into a teleprompter and it'll just be much much easier so alex i think in this uh, workshop it's not getting better in terms of sound because you cannot use sound panels they will be too dusty because dust everywhere almost all the time so the best way to work with the sound in this environment is to use wireless microphones so guys not only the image quality is important but also the audio quality is as important but in case of your workshop i think that the wireless systems is the best solution because the microphone is up close to your mouth like less than 15 centimeters and it's providing you with the best audio quality so if you work in such um, conditions on-camera microphones are not the best choice. I would prefer wireless system. So right now we're using the DJI mic. Also, you do own Rode Wireless Go 2. I by the way, speaking about internal microphone of Sony ZV-E10, it has three uh, directional microphones inside and it's more than fine if you want to try to record something fast and to like without plugging in a different mic or wireless system for micro vlog it's more than good you have to work with it in post of course with equalizer but more or less this will do the job done so guys now it's time for us to shoot as it is as you have the practical lights and with your smartphone like you did before and after that we'll be setting proper lights with softbox with color lights uh, with Emron 200x and shoot with the proper camera and compare those images and after that we'll set a talking headshot and uh, as you did it before with your iPhone and with local lights and with uh, iPhone sound as well and then we'll make it with the proper professional gear Let's go. So as you can see guys, right now we're showing you the footage of iPhone 12, not even the 12 Pro Max, not the you know most recent camera, not the best one, two generations behind. As you can see, it's pretty decent, so the lighting is a king and basically you can get good shots with your iPhone but of course I do like the shots from the proper camera more but lighting is on the first place camera is on the second that's for sure so guys right now we're recording on Alex's camera Sony ZV E10 just uh, automatic settings and also we're using active steady shot so you can have a look at the image quality and we'll tell you what we did here to achieve this kind of look so our <laughs> cameraman Michael will shoot some backstage so here we have the softbox with the grid to focus the light so it's not spilling everywhere also here we have Aperture B7C as an accent light and it's just adding a little bit of mood to it as an accent so here we have basically one light and here is one more with color from Amaran and just has some purple glow it's a very easy setup, one softbox, one accent light, and one more accent light. How do you like it? You like it? Nah. Yeah, it's pretty easy to use. So I guess it looks pretty nice in my opinion. And of course, it's not as flat and boring like with the iPhone. Вот такую картинку и звук с iPhone мы можем получить в моей мастерской с использованием стандартного света. А вот такую картинку мы можем получить с помощью вот этого вот профессионального оборудования. Hey man, I'm pretending to be an exhibit and do you know, like pimp my right stuff. So I hope that you did enjoy this and that you know the difference. You can see the difference. I don't like the color of my skin in here. So let's uh, tell to the guys what we have here. So here is the 85 centimeter softbox with grid. 
and the, the color temperature is around 4000 Kelvin to make the background look more cool. So we have the color temperature in camera, 4000 Kelvin, 4000 Kelvin on the light itself, and the backlight is for 6500 Kelvin. And that is why we have this little table and background uh, looking more cool. Then we built into a monitor, another monitor for a monitor, of course not. <laughs> Here we have the backlight aperture 60D and it shines to the back of his head. That is why we have a very nice backlight as you can see on this shot. And also the spotlights that Alex uses in his studio, we also use those. It's just not as boring in terms of the walls. Also here we have a RGB light wand, but we used it as a daylight and it adds up a little bit of fill to this side of Alex's face. And also here we have a foam board that helps us to fill this part of the body of Alex so we have no two dark shadows. Here's what we got. So guys, that's a wrap. I hope you did enjoy this. Just say yes <laughs> to the subscribers. So I hope you guys also did enjoy this content and if you did, smash the like and subscribe bottles as I say in my videos and hit the notifications bell. I'll see you in the next video and I hope that you did enjoy this format. One day, as well as I hope, we'll do more of such videos and also go check the Alex's main channel and his English channel as well. It's a very nice DIY channel. See you in the next video, guys. Take care. Bye.